is the process of constructing a place through relationship practices and representations of meaning. And we are interested on not on the graffiti per se, we are interested on the people who see the graffiti. Then we have the appraisal theory, which is a system to analyze and systematize expressions of the speakers. And um, the, the theory has three main domains, uh, attitude, engagement, and judgment. Um, attitude, engagement, and graduation, we are only focused on attitude. So from attitude, we are considering three um, subdomains, affect, judgment, and appreciation. So affect is used to analyze the expressions that refer to emotions. Judgment is used to analyze the expressions that refer to um, people, uh, institutions, groups of people, or objects that have agentive characteristics. And appreciation is used to evaluate objects or things. Then multimodality is the perspective of um, analyzing, yeah, or studying different texts that are composed of different um, semiotic holes. For example, colors and words. It could be also texture, among others. And multimodal literacy includes all these skills that people develop to understand of multimodal texts. Then we have the eye tracker, which Adrian was well to cover. <clears throat> eye tracking is a method that allows for direct tracking of gaze while individuals perceive as stimulus, for example, a text. This method involves a recording where the, the gaze stops and the moves in real time using a sense of technology. This approach eliminates uh, the need for individuals first to process the text and then provide their opinions about what they uh, did while reading them, therefore avoiding uh, the risk of bias or so of social desirability, de <coughs> influencing their resp responses. Behind studies using eye trackers and text lies the eye mind hypothesis. Uh, that is, when gaze stops on a word or image, the, the person is processing the uh, information of what they are seeing. This means uh, the longer the, the duration of uh, fixation, the higher the processing cause of the visual stimulus, words or images. This is our eye tracker, right? Uh, 500 for, from SMI. <laughs> Method. The, the global project is divided in four uh, phases. First, we collected the linguistic or semiotic landscape visible in the public space of four neighborhoods, two in Santiago, Chile, and two in San Jose, Costa Rica. Here, in the world, we will only refer, uh, refer to the world with text from Costa Rica. Uh, the registration was done uh, through photographs of graffiti, without commercial and institutional signs. Um, second, we conducted an online questionnaire with Costa Rican university students who did not live in these neighborhoods. We asked uh, this participant about their neighborhood and public space based on different images and words, which were answered uh, considered a legal scale, indica indicating <clears throat> the level of agreement or disagreement. We will delve into this uh, level. Here, we focus on, on the responses based on tax and throw up based on the resp responses obtained. And we initial, initiated a phase a C. <clears throat> This third phase consisted in conducting two focus groups in Costa Rica. The first group included young adults under the age of 30 years who had completed university studies or were currently 
university students. The second focus group in Costa Rica was comprised of women from rural towns uh, called Avangaritos. Additionally, a focus group was conducted with students from different countries at the University of Potsdam, German. In the three focus groups, we presented different images, included, including the tags and swaps from the online questionnaire. The person in charge of the focus group applied a, a protocol with questions to uh, generate responses and discussions about public space and the image. From the focus group, we are inter interested, interested in responses uh, related to tax and through apps. In, phase, in phases two and three, we analyzed quantum qualitatively the expressive uh, attitudes. Furthermore, in phase three, we analyzed and systematized uh, the evaluative, evaluative expression using the appraisal theory. <clears throat> Based on some responses about the quality and aesthetic of the graffiti and the skill of the graffiti artists expressed in phase three, we constructed phase four. This phase involved an experiment using an eye tracker. 46 university students participated in this experiment, 23 art students and 23 students uh, from other disciplines. The students were shown uh, 14 images, out of which three were pieces, pastel pieces. Here we only focus on the partial results, uh, results obtained um, from the masterpiece of on these pieces. Cluster, desk, mush. After viewing a piece image, uh, the participants were expected to answer about what the large letters said. We focused on the responses uh, regarding the identification of the graphemes and measure the number of fi fi fixation, fixation duration and number of regress regressions in each grapheme. The graphemes of Rust. With the with that eye tracker, we aim to examine whether there were different reading patterns between individual individuals with pre pression, visual, or multimodal literacy, specifically is, uh, art students and students without that background. Additionally, we added the observation of reading patterns between those uh, those uh, who correctly identified the graphemes and those who did not. Okay, now we're going to the results. And we have first those from the online questionnaire. As you can see in the first column, we showed the participants several statements. The first one is the only one that is um, negative. The other ones are positive ones. And as you can see in the table, most of the participants consider that, let's say, the place where the tag is located is unsafe. And also, most of them disagree with the positive uh, statement. So, for example, they will not go to the place where the tag is to have a drink or eat. They will also don't live there. They don't consider that this is a cosmopolitan, cosmopolitan place, for example, which is very interesting because all of these um, um, positive um, statements are real from the graffitis where we took the pictures because the place is like a very wealthy neighborhood. Wow. They have all of these characteristics and most of the people, if you ask them relating the, the yeah, saying the name of the place, they will say that they will live there. Probably they will say that they will not be able because it's very expensive, but they will live there. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have the tax attitudes and appraisal. So we focused, as I said before, on the subdomains, and all of these subdomains have different categories. So, for example, in the Costa Rican focus groups, we have like 
that participants said that the place where the attack was located was insecure. And compared to the German group, well, the international group, they said that this one was most unsafe. This was compared to other uh, images they saw. So that will be, that could include other type of graffiti, street art, and also the commercial and institutional signage. Then we have that for judgment in Costa Rica, they consider that graffiti artists are bundles. We don't have these type of um, yeah, expressions in the international group. Then uh, for appreciation regarding the quality of the urban space, it was very interesting that for Costa Ricans, they always associated um, the tag, the place where the tags were located with uh, bad smells. For example, here they smell like all these people's poop. Mm -hmm. And this was not the case in the international group. It was associated with dirty place or pretty busy area. And regarding the graffiti per se, we have linguistic expressions from Costa Rica's less aesthetic and from um, the international group as art or messiness. Then regarding the throbs, they were shown with the same statement. And here we can see again, we have the same like high um, percentages from participants according to these statements, but in this case, they are reduced compared to the fact one, not that much reduced, but a little bit. And regarding the attitude and appraisal, we have, um, for example, here we have positive ones compared to the ones of the tax in Costa Rica. And there's a participant who said that I certainly prefer the graffiti to the gray wall. And in the international group, in terms of style, I like this piece. Then for moral integrity regarding the graffiti artists, we still have that um, they are vandals that are painting the walls, but in this case, we had a positive um, expression that it not, does not necessarily has to be vandalism. And regarding the quality of the graffiti, we had um, positive expressions in Costa Rica regarding these walls, for example, to be painted in a t-shirt. And in the international, it's very interesting that it looks like very old and that's kind of a rare thing. So this is one of the videos that we can get from the eye tracker as a result. This one includes all of the case movements of the 46 participants. So as you can see, it's very hard to identify where the participants are actually looking. <laughs> then we have um, the next video. You should mass it. What's work? Okay, and in this one, we only have the um, gaze movements of those participants who um, identify the graphene. Also, it's hard to say where they are looking at your scene of them. No. Okay. This is other type of result that we can get with the eye tracker. It's a focus map. And as you can see here, it's also related with the uh, participants who saw all the graphemes. You can see that there's dark, the dark spaces are on the side and the case is focused on the center where the letters are. So regarding the comparison between students of arts and other degrees, here we hypothesized before applying the experiment that art students will be the ones who will probably identify more of the words, but it was not the case. Mm -hmm. As you can see on Roost and Desk, the higher uh, yeah, percentage of correct um, responses regarding the work were from uh, students from other disciplines. This is not the case with Mosh, but there was only one person who actually said it correct, so it's not possible to compare it to the other ones. Then we have the comparison between those who identified the graphemes and those who did not. This example is from Ruskip. So even though here we can see that um, we have the same number of incorrect and correct ones and correct ones are not that high number of participants, we can see a pattern on the mean of time fixation. So participants with that actually identify correctly the graphemes, they stayed or had a high, a high fixation time. Me. And then regarding the conclusions. So basically we have then in Costa Rican, Costa Rican participants, we have negative attitudes so toward, towards urban space, graffiti and graffiti artists. 
based on tags and drops. Uh, there will not be a specialized literacy, visual, or multimodal of art students that will allow them to identify graffiti. So this takes down our hypothesis. And then there will be a difference in fixation time between those who identify and those who did not identify the graphemes, as we saw in the last table. And from this uh, research, we came up with two questions. Uh, first, if longer fixation time means more cognitive effort, then is there no development of the specific skills to identify graphemes in graffiti in the participants? And the second one is, are longer fixations related to aesthetic appreciation? We intend to uh, answer these questions in future and uh, research. So that's all from us. Thank you for your attention and wrap up. Go for it. So I'm curious. To were there any, if you can go back uh, a slide, there, there we go. Were there any um, demographic characteristics about the people that spent longer looking, you know, mm -hmm. um, than those who did not? I mean, were there any, were there any similarities you can see between those people? We didn't focus on that. Okay. But it's actually a good point. Yeah, I, I just think it's interesting that some people are looking twice as long in some instances. Mm -hmm. So. What is it that makes those people look and other people look less? Yes. And also we have, like we divided them be between art students and non-art mm -hmm. students. Could also be something specific from the career that, yes, the degree they started to something like that as well. Could also be a variable in the theater. I, I was also wondering if I might add, um, if you ask them if they had any knowledge about graffiti before, because that would also be uh, an interesting division between people who are knowledgeable in the field of graffiti and are not, and therefore mm -hmm. focus more on stuff. Yes, it was us, but well, well, yeah, perhaps. there was not no difference okay. between those who follow graffiti. But we wanted to continue with this idea testing the experiment with people who are actually graffiti artists mm -hmm. to see if with them there is an actual difference. Yes, also would be interesting to check the eye movement, like if they see the graffiti, the graffiti are different than the... Exactly, what do they focus on yeah. compared to those who are not graffiti artists? That would be wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Um, maybe a risk that there are questions also to indicate in general social or in background or you know, some European energy. They were all students, university schools. Yes. The only difference is on while the book is for Sid Costa Rica, you have that on a rural rural place to check if they will be they will have like because that was other hypothesis that we had. That maybe if they are not in the city and they are not exposed like all the time to the graffiti, they will have like more negative impressions. But I'm not so sure about that because we also had negative expressions of the group of students, which we should we mostly think that they will not have that negative attitudes. Something else? Yep. Um, I'm really interested in these negative attitudes because like. Uh, when when you are like on the other side of the ocean and, and read about Latin America and all the things that are happening in street art and graffiti there, you have this impression that it's like such a vibrant and wonderful scene and that actually the locals are so uh, you know, used to living in the streets and having the street as one of their spaces so that everything is more or less kind of uh, more accepted maybe than in, in the European cities. So it sounds like, you know, Latin America is a mecca for, for those people that really love graffiti and street art. And now you're going to come back with the information that even the art students think that, you know, they're done in uh, unsafe places and that they're like, maybe like negative connotations related to graffiti and I was just wondering, like, okay, is, is this a, another case of uh, 
media sending us like a, a different picture than what it really is in, in real life in, in real space in real city i think there we have to consider first that latin america is very big huge yeah mm -hmm. so i would say that we should focus on the context costa rica it's i would say a special case <laughs> and mm -hmm. you when you are growing up you listen to your parents saying like oh those are vandals, those who do that. Like you don't actually listen to them like appreciating the art unless your parents are from an artistic background. Like that was my case. <laughs> but <clears throat> that's usually what you hear. Like it's a graffiti artist directly related to vandalism. Even though you don't like, it's like re the reproduction of this discourse, even though people don't actually think about that. They don't make a reflection of that. It's just part of the culture. I mean, mm. so that's one thing. And yeah, I think that's mainly what you asked, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah, I think yeah, it's sorry. also very different from what she had on her case on Chile. Yeah. <laughs> like also for us, we have a very like, how to say, in religions and education. So everything is like right or wrong completely. And we are not, uh, we are not taught to say what we think necessarily as it's, it happens in Chile. And if something is going bad politically, you don't actually say it. Mm -hmm. So for them seeing like, for example, political graffiti, oh, those are, it's that this is like something that you might hear. Like those are, um, yeah, exactly the vandals that are doing those bad things on the walls? Why do they have to go on and damage the wall? The, which probably is not the case in Chile, because... Yeah, yeah that's why I actually I wanted to continue and, and I just touched that. I think some of things are similar and some things are different, of course. And what you said about the context and, and how people in the like, university those countries, it's also related not to the graffiti itself. I would say it's like a, an idea of it because if you're in the United States, say, that's it. And if you see a graffiti, then that's not make you feel unsafe because we're already in a safe city. Mm -hmm. I mean, in my case, that's an foreigner. I from here and all the people say that it's a safe place. They go to Germany, it's more or less the same. It might be that it's not the case, but that is the understanding of the place. Yeah. If you go to Latin America and you live in Latin America, usually the perception is that you're unsafe. So everything that is related to the idea of being on these kind of walls, it doesn't, doesn't have to do necessarily with the art expressed there. It's just because the whole place, the whole situation, they're making you feel unsafe. And if you see that outside of the context, outside of the nice neighborhood, um, then you will get automatically related to what that same place. So I would, I would, I would say like, we can not uh, just see the picture and just um, have an impression of the uh, interaction of the people only watching the picture because yeah, my, my decision is they are in the place, for example, and also how they feel in, in that place. If you talk to the people and you show this picture and you tell them that this is a nice place in Vienna, probably they will change their mind and they will think what it's safe. So. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. This is exactly what I needed, you know. Sometimes we just forget it, like that the context is maybe the thing that matters the most. Because like similar things with Belgrade, but like I was just like, I don't know, uh issued by all these wonderful articles about Latin America and it's like when you say like yeah, I want to go to like all continent and just like see your videos through that everywhere. It's actually wonderful. When you see with that eye, yeah. what is going on there, it's quite a, an experience.